The legislature finished its first major deadline, floor cutoff, in which bills must be passed from their house of origin or they're considered dead for the year. You had three prime-sponsored bills that passed the House and were sent to the Senate. Can you tell us about each of those bills? You bet. The first bill that I think we've discussed here a little bit before is uh, House Bill 2057, and that's the misdemeanor arrest bill. As you know, a police officer to arrest or make a custodial arrest for a misdemeanor has to watch that crime occur. There are exceptions to that law. However, in most situations, the officer has to be present and watch it. And what this bill does is make a one-word change that will allow a police officer to effectively transfer their probable cause. So a second officer who didn't actually witness the crime could make the arrest. Secondly, this bill passed out of the House on the day before it cut off, House Bill 2235. And this is a warrant bill. So currently, courts of lower jurisdiction, district courts and uh, municipal court judges are not allowed to issue search warrants outside of their, uh, their respective county or jurisdiction. This bill, in most situations, would allow those courts of limited jurisdiction the ability to do that. And the effect on this for our local law enforcement officers is, say like up in Snohomish County, if I had a, a DUI crash where the suspect was airlifted down to Harborview, it would allow me to use my local district court judge to issue the search warrant for that for the the blood, the evidence um, of that DUI, um, even though the suspect is outside the county. The amendment that we put on this bill narrows the bill sufficiently so that it's not necessarily a statewide application. I wouldn't be able to go over to Spokane County to uh, to get a search warrant for something that happened someplace else in the state. It would mandate that the uh, that the local judge where the car crime occurred or the county in which it occurred would have to be the one to issue that warrant. So and and it and it. Uh, appropriately limits the bill so that police officers aren't able to shop around. And that's not necessarily a huge problem across the state, but it, but it uh, diminishes that concern. And the third bill was my public employee identity theft bill. You know, identity theft is still very, very prevalent in our society, especially here in Washington State. And we need to do everything we can to protect our public employees in that respect. So um, this bill will appropriately limit the ability for people to uh, essentially prey on public employees by making it so they can't get their um, identification card numbers and stuff from the Public Information Act. What kind of support do you expect for those bills in the Senate? So I've been working real hard with my colleagues over in the Senate in this matter, and I really suspect all three of them are going to go in one form or another. I'm very happy to report that all three of those bills are probably going to pass, whether it be in their Senate version or their House version, but I'm working hard on these issues. The State Economic and Revenue Forecast Council last week issued its revenue forecast for the state, and for the first time, it is including in its report expected revenue from the taxation of recreational marijuana, about $51 million in the 2015-17 budget cycle. Were you surprised that the council is now projecting this revenue for budgeting reasons? Yes, I am. I'm really concerned about this, you know, largely because... We're, we're moving into uncharted territory in this respect, not just on the policy issues, but on the revenue issues. And we're really not sure how much money we're going to get from this tax revenue. So I would really encourage the state and the people who are looking at the revenues from this to really take a step back and be much more conservative in their estimations because we really don't know where we're going with this. And another thing to consider here is that we're, we're looking at a, a product that the tax revenue or the tax rates that we're looking at are very, very high. And I'm very concerned that with those high tax rates, it's going to just uh, push the price of that product, the marijuana product, much higher and make people much more dependent on the black market uh, um, instead of the, the legitimate market for these, for these issues. So that's something that I'm really concerned about. You know, I'm, I'm encouraged by the, revenue sort, by, the, by the revenue report, but we also really need to focus on the fact that even though we're, we're looking at about another $80 million in, in revenue here, that, generally speaking, our revenues are staying pretty flat. Um, so I'm encouraged by a positive report and not a deficit report like we've been in in so, in so many of the past years. Um, but that being considered, we need to tread very lightly on those revenue sources and make sure we don't go making, making uh, promises or over-promising 
uh, when we essentially don't have the revenue to do that. And we have to be very, very careful about the policies that we put in place that affect those revenues because we are in such a delicate situation here. So we don't want to make any, any decisions that are going to uh, push us back into the deficit.